This video is a follow on to my previous carbon monoxide video where I talk in more detail about what it is, what causes it, how to avoid it and the right alarm to have for use in a vehicle. I'd highly suggest watching it first if you haven't already. A contentious area that often brings up discussion around carbon monoxide is the use of non-room sealed appliances inside a van. So in this video I'm going to share my thoughts and some practical demonstrations to help you decide if you should think twice before fitting one. So keep watching. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything camper van and motorhome related from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video please do hit the thumbs up, it really does help me to know what you like and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I'd know what you didn't like. The topic of this video has potential safety implications for you and your van. Although I have experience of van life, I am not a professional van builder or heating engineer. Therefore, any information I share is purely my opinion. What you choose to install and how you install it is entirely your choice and it is your responsibility to ensure it meets your needs and is safe. Whilst it is true that in the UK if you are using your self build camper van yourself there is no legal requirement to have the gas checked at installation or regularly serviced I would highly recommend it simply due to the risk of incorrect installation and lack of servicing causing the production of carbon monoxide. However if you are hiring out or selling your van commercially there is a legal requirement and you must consult with a gas safe registered engineer. I understand that any gas safe engineer would not approve the installation or be able to service a non-room sealed water heater in the living space of a van, even if you told them you'll only ever use it with the doors open. Let's start by looking at the key differences between a non-room sealed water heater and a water heater designed for use in a motorhome or camper van. As these units aren't sealed and are designed for use outdoors, they release their products of combustion into the van. These are primarily made up of carbon dioxide and water. However, if the combustion of the LPG isn't complete, it will also release carbon monoxide. A reduced level of oxygen is something that would make the combustion incomplete. The design of this type of water heater increases the chance of this as it takes its combustion air from the van, so depleting the oxygen. So, what if it's fitted with a vent or flue to the outside? Now whilst it's possible this will reduce the amount of products of combustion, it's very unlikely to eliminate them, as because the unit is not sealed, the other vents in the unit are just as likely to release them into the van. Outside this obviously wouldn't be an issue, but in a van you can see why it would be. And it doesn't change the fact that the unit is still consuming oxygen from inside the van. Gas powered water heating appliances that are approved for installation in a camper van are designed to receive their combustion air from outside and expel all their products of combustion to the outside. This ensures that the products of combustion are released outside of the van and the heater has a good supply of oxygen from outside and does not deplete the oxygen inside the van. But hobs, ovens and grills fitted in camper vans don't receive their combustion air from outside or vent their products of combustion to outside, so it can't be that bad, can it? Well, one of the key differences between cooking appliances and tankless water heaters is the amount of gas the unit burns over a period of time. An average gas hob, oven or grill is approximately 1.5 to 2.5 kilowatts, whereas the average tankless water heater can be 20 times that at more than 30 kilowatts. This means the water heater needs to burn a lot more gas in a shorter period of time, which means the concentration of the products of combustion given off and the amount of oxygen they use up is significantly higher. If you've seen my previous video, you'll remember that it's a result of incomplete combustion that carbon monoxide is produced, and one of the causes of this is insufficient oxygen. So, a high gas usage, non-room sealed appliance has a double whammy. It generates more products of combustion because of its high burn rate, which in a confined space could also cause depleted oxygen, which would cause incomplete combustion, and therefore those products of combustion would have a higher concentration of carbon monoxide. 
but you have a carbon monoxide alarm, so that's okay, right? Well, yes and no. A carbon monoxide alarm is an essential piece of safety equipment, and it would be very wise to have one if you have any fossil fuel burning appliance, but it does have to be the right one. You can see which ones are designed and built to meet the requirements of use in a vehicle in my previous carbon monoxide video. The other consideration is that carbon monoxide alarms measure the concentration of carbon monoxide in the air over periods of time and have a threshold over different time periods before they will trigger. Whilst carbon monoxide is clearly dangerous in high concentrations in a very short period of time, it's also dangerous in low concentrations over a prolonged period of time. Carbon monoxide alarms measure the concentration of carbon monoxide in the air, not the level of carbon monoxide in your body, which can differ greatly, as the level of CO in your van can drop quickly once an appliance is switched off. But the level of carboxyhemoglobin in your body takes a significant period to diffuse. I'll try to demonstrate that here. Consider this box is a van. With a gas hob on, you'll get products of combustion that may contain carbon monoxide building up inside the van. Some of this will dissipate through the ventilation or be diluted by fresh air including oxygen coming in. This is why there are standards on the amount of fixed ventilation that is required in a commercially built motorhome or caravan. But even so, where carbon monoxide is produced, some will probably be absorbed by anyone in the van forming carboxyhemoglobin and blocking the absorption of as much oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. The half-life of carboxyhemoglobin is approximately four hours, so it could still take quite an amount of time, even for a small amount to be fully diffused. Now let's consider our non-room sealed tankless water heater. This produces significantly more products of combustion due to the amount of gas being burnt in a short period of time. As before, some will dissipate to outside and some fresh air will dilute, but without significant ventilation, i.e. being outside the van, there will inevitably be higher concentration in the van. So this creates a risk that more carboxyhemoglobin will be formed in the body. It's quite possible that there may not be enough carbon monoxide in the air to trigger the alarm, as the level may not be immediately dangerous. With that 4 hour half life in mind, starting at a higher concentration, it will take significantly longer for the carboxyhemoglobin levels in the body to reduce even if the van has been completely vented. So now imagine the water heater is used again to do the washing up. That rapid burn of large amounts of gas again increases the concentration of products of combustion in the van. And once again, if those products of combustion include carbon monoxide, more carboxyhemoglobin is formed in the body, on top of that that was previously formed but not yet diffused. Repeat this sequence over time and you can see how the levels of carboxyhemoglobin in the body can reach dangerous levels without the level of carbon monoxide in the van necessarily triggering an alarm. Yes, theoretically this could happen with a hob or oven, but it would take significantly longer and more prolonged use than if it was a with a water heater. As that's quite a lot to take in, I'm going to try to quickly demonstrate it in a couple of more practical ways. Just remember, it's not a scientific experiment, it's just a way to demonstrate the likely effect. Imagine this container is a van. It has holes in the bottom to represent the fixed ventilation a camper van should have, and I'll be adding liquid to represent the products of combustion. Just remember that in reality, to deal with gases, ventilation would be at high and low level. Let's start with the low volume and slow release of products of combustion from something like a hob. As we can see, the ventilation is easily able to keep up with this, and the concentration in the van stays low. And once the combustion stops, it doesn't take long for the products to diffuse. Now let's look at a representation of a non-room sealed water heater with high gas usage and therefore proportional production of products of combustion. As we can see that fixed ventilation is soon overwhelmed and the products of combustion build inside the van. It also takes longer for the levels to diffuse once the combustion has stopped. Now let's consider the container represents the human body. We've now got a constant flow of liquid in and out representing respiration. 
Now we're going to add dye to represent the products of combustion from a hob. As we can see, it only has a small effect and it is soon diluted, similarly to the behaviour we'd expect to see of carboxyhemoglobin on the bloodstream. Now with the proportionate amount of products of combustion from a non-room sealed water heater, we can clearly see the impact of the greater volume in a shorter time, and the amount of time it takes to dilute. And if we were to fire up that heater again, we can see a representation of the compounding effect due to the amount of time it takes to diffuse. As I said, this obviously isn't a calibrated scientific experiment, but I think it does help to represent the risks involved. I'm never going to tell someone what they should or shouldn't fit in their van, but I will share my experience, knowledge and research for you to decide if it's right for you. And if you are in any way unsure, consult a qualified professional about your individual circumstance. Firstly, I've stressed this is my personal opinion using the information and feedback that I have had. So, are non-room sealed tankless water heaters safe? If used in the way the manufacturer intended and following the instructions, yes, they are safe but that would mean having it outside your van in open air whenever you use it. Could you fit one inside your van? Unless you're hiring it out or selling it commercially, then legally there's nothing to stop you. Could fitting one inside your van cause you harm? Well, in short, yes, and it's much more likely to than fitting an approved solution. Would I fit one in my van? That's an easy answer, no. I wouldn't be comfortable with it and would never forgive myself if anyone was harmed by it or from following my lead. If you want to see some more solutions for hot water that I would use, you can check these out in my video here. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.